Hi there, I'm Lorenzo and welcome to the first volume of Movie Tying Games on the PSP. Enjoy the video! James Bond from Russia with Love is an okay game, but it has drawbacks. The game does a tremendous job in the art style and the game looks great, but there is stuff missing. For example, there are no car sequences like in the console versions. The game is just a bunch of shootouts, with some very light puzzle solving in between. Also Spectre became Octopus in the game because of licensing reasons. As for the gadgets you get, you get ones like the Q-Copter, a miniature helicopter that provides Bond with surveillance of hard to reach areas and acts as a weapon, it explodes on command. Bond also has a special belt that lets him grapple and ascend steep areas. There's also the crazy jetpack which you can use to navigate certain levels and, and wreak havoc with its machine guns and guided rockets. You also get Q darts and the laser watch. Most of the game is just a bunch of shootouts, but at least the shooting mechanics are great. You even get the bond focus mode which isn't that fun to use, but it's helpful. In the bond focus mode, when you press square, you can focus on an area where you want to shoot. Basically, it's some sort of manual target, but it feels pretty sloppy. The game consists of 8 single player missions, and after you finish the mission, you unlock the challenges. And with the challenges added, the game offers around 2 hours of gameplay, even more, which is pretty good. And there are unlockables to be found, like more challenges and hidden characters for the multiplayer. Now the online multiplayer is dead, but luckily the PSP also has ad hoc. And you can play that ad hoc multiplayer with friends, meaning that if you have other friends with PSPs, up to 6 players can play in multiplayer. You just gather around, connect your PSPs via ad hoc and have a blast. And you can play with friends death matches and last man standing, overall the game is decent. It sounds more promising on paper. The first mission and some missions through feel great, but others are just very dull, especially those that have nothing to do with the plot of the movie. This doesn't mean that the game is bad, it's easy to pick up, but a little tough when the game has frame rate stutters, awkward targeting or poor distribution of ammo. You'll be happy when a checkpoint comes by, but the game is still a decent experience overall, even if it has parts where it feels dull and repetitive or sloppy. But then, the great graphics and the good gameplay will still make you probably want to play it till the end. Beowulf is an action-oriented hack and slash title that copies a lot from other titles and does a poor job at it. You have your traditional map screen loaded with objectives, weapons that will appear here and there along the landscape, and the traditional health and energy bars. Levels are fairly long with the occasional cutscene or objective change breaking up the action, the story fills in the gaps within the original tale, and the game sounds promising, on paper, but when you get to play it, it's dull. Enemies are dull and combat doesn't feel that good when you see how much you will miss because you don't align your character right and you miss even a stationary target. A lock-on system would have been a great addition in the game. But a good side of the game are the many weapons you get to play with. But you will be disappointed to see that even if the weapons are different visually, they handle roughly the same. And a small detail about the weapons is that weapons break. This doesn't help the game, nor make the already bad experience better or worse, it's just a minor detail. But the moves you get definitely make the game bad. You have a generic light attack and a generic heavy attack. And you have a berserk mode. Enemies take so many hits that the game becomes just annoying. Periodically you can go back to a camp, pick up weapons, train new skills, and then head back for another annoying button mashing experience. But interesting enough, the game isn't boring. In fact, due to the poorly executed game mechanics, the game offers a fair challenge. Health potions or health spots where you can replenish your health are scarce, and if you die anywhere in a level, you get restarted from the beginning of it. You can get restarted 15 or even 20 minutes back. You have to be strategic when you play. 
to your aid are your themes. You can buff them up with the same energy bar you activate your berserk mode called Carnal Fury. The problem with your themes is that they are incredibly stupid. They do exactly what you tell them. If you tell them to move something and an enemy attacks them, they will continue doing the activity instead of defending themselves. You even have to tell them to draw from a health well. They don't do it automatically. That's how stupid they are. Also toggling through them is annoying. You can't issue general commands for all of them. No, you need to manually select a theme give him or her a command and then toggle to the next one. The mechanic feels clunky. Also boss battles aren't that great. They revolve around you running around and going for the blind spot of an enemy. Your themes don't have a life bar in boss battles for some reason, so you can also command them to attack and then run around the map for 20 minutes until the enemy is down, until, you, until your themes get the enemy down. Or, in the first boss battle, the game was also terrible. No matter what you do, you will lose in a few hits the first round, then a cutscene comes and after the cutscene you become invincible. Yup, you have infinite berserk mode. You can't lose the fight anymore. You just have to wait for the animations to finish, cause in rest you just pummel the attack buttons. You don't have to dodge or do anything else to win. Overall, the game is just plain bad. The story isn't cohesive, the gameplay is lousy and tiresome, the music is barely there, and the graphics are just okay. You have no reason to play this game. If you're a fan, the game will mostly be okay for you, I guess. I guess that you will find most probably the game okay at best, but for anyone else, this game will be just bad. And as a side note, I had fun in the game. It's objectively bad, but as bad as it was, and lousy and repetitive, I still had fun for some reason. I don't know why, it was so bad that I kind of enjoyed it. Okay, I didn't enjoy the bad part the repetitive parts, the frustrating parts, but somehow I still had a little bit of fun in the game too. James Cameron's Avatar The Game is in my opinion average, though Metacritic doesn't share my view, but it's close. In the game you do two types of things, fly and stealth. The flying feels basic and sloppy, but it's nothing you haven't seen or felt in other PSP tie-in games. And the stealth is okay, but some lack of animations and occasional sloppiness makes these sections less fun. One mechanic in particular is horrible, the bow mechanic. You can fire arrows. Problem is, once you draw your bow, you can't move your character anymore. And what is even worse is that you can't move your crosshair too much. Which means that if you want to hit a target, you need to be at a certain distance. And wait for the reticle to turn red. Oh. And if you are too far, arrows won't do a thing. If you are too close, you won't be targeting your target. The bow mechanic sucks big time in the game. But still, the game still has some praiseworthy stuff, like for example the checkpoint system, the upgrade menu that could have looked better but hey, you get an upgrade menu, and the game even if it's repetitive, it also has some variation here and there. It throws new stuff. The main gameplay will still feel repetitive, even if the game brings new stuff on the table, but hey, on paper, it's varied. Also, I like the difficulty settings. Easy is easy, and hard is hard. Basically, I had fun in the game, but most of it looked and felt mediocre. It might not be a hidden gem, but still, it's pretty decent. I mean, for movie tie-in game standards, it's pretty good, but for normal game standards, it's decent, or below average. You can have fun in the game, but it also has some flaws that don't ruin your experience, 
but make you feel like you are playing a mediocre game. 300 March to Glory is an average to mediocre game. The gameplay mechanics are decent, you get a light attack, a heavy attack and you can blunt with your shield and even throw spears. But even if this sounds great, using the abilities throughout the whole game gets repetitive. Unlocking new abilities would have made the game better, N getting new abilities along the way. But no, you have just the same abilities from the beginning of the game. All you can unlock are different versions of your shield, sword or spear. The presentation during cutscenes is great, but the presentation during gameplay isn't as impressive. What I didn't like is that there are only two Spartans on screen. Out of 300, you get to see only two during combat. The only time you get to see more than two Spartans is here, where you do this formation. The game is just underwhelming. It's playable and you can enjoy it, but most of you will most probably just find it dull. Godfather Mob Wars hasn't been so well regarded by critics. I've seen many complain that it doesn't have free roam. Sure, free roam would have made the game 10 times better. I agree, but even without free roam, I enjoyed the game to the fullest. The PS3 version has free roam, but on the PSP, you get only missions. You start with a cutscene, play the given level, you get another cutscene, you just jump from one mission to the other. I agree that it would have made the game feel like the Mafia series if it had free room. But as I said, in my opinion, the lack of an open world doesn't hinder the game to be great. As for the missions themselves, you do Mafia specific tasks like roughen up people, being able to grab and throw them and punch them, when it comes to guns, and it will come to guns like in any Mafia game, you can cover and get to use a decent amount of different weapons, the shootouts will take most part of the game's walkthrough, and even if it would sound repetitive, it never felt, it never felt repetitive to me. The mechanics felt like I was playing a Mafia title on a PSP, and that is great. You can also upgrade your skills, though I never felt a difference after upgrading. And you can also buy weapons before starting a mission. Also the gameplay has two sections. One is the story, where you do what has to be done for the family, and in the second one, you get mob wars. Here the game turns into a turn-based strategy game. You have to conquer the city. You have three phases there. The recruitment phase, where as the name says, you recruit from the options the game gives you. In negotiations, you have to select from multiple cards with effects the one you see most fitting. And in the intimidation phase, you attack the rackets of other families to run them out of business. And it's nice that here you can extort money, just like in the story mode. And ex doing extortions is oddly satisfying in this game. You just have to destroy the shop and beat up the owner until he gives you the money. Or you have to plant a bomb. Or you have to shoot all the mobsters in a racket. The game has variety. Even if after a while in Mob Wars you will feel the game to be a tad repetitive. This part of the game felt just there for me. It was enjoyable, but not really something wow. Some reviewers complain that the turn-based action lacks depth, but I personally enjoyed it. Overall, the game is amazing. I liked the game a lot, and I will recommend it further. For a PSP game, I consider it a hidden gem. The game is simple, yet packs some great moments, even comparable in some parts to the Mafia series. And if you're a fan of the movies, you'll do yourself a great service by playing this game since the plot in the game doesn't follow the movie, it's a side story. I'm not giving you any details to not spoil you the fun, but if you liked the movies and want to see more story material, you're missing out on some great content if you don't play this gem. Okay, so this was the video. 
If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.